It's the next level. Hey, my name is Ross Marquand and I play Red Skull. You are listening to Panels to Pixels podcast. Check it out. You've wasted your breath, Borch. I don't kill dragons. Take my advice. No treasure is worth dying for. Depends on the treasure. What I need is a new adventure. One final first before I'm too old to do anything but die. And you think killing a dragon will bring you that? All I know is there's one path up the mountain and it's overrun with monsters. With you on my team, dear Witcher, we'll be unstoppable. <laughs> Someone get me a fucking drink! Barman! Those dwarves will be part of the hunt. Barman! Gerald could handle them in his sleep. Oh, get right. panelers welcome back to the show i'm mark and i'm steve and this week we are concentrating on the witcher season one episode six and it's called rare species yes and the episode synopsis is a mysterious man tries to entice Geralt to join a hunt for a rampaging dragon a quest that attracts a familiar face and siri questions who she can trust now, there was a lot going on with this episode. I got a whole, like, Fellowship of the Rings vibe out of this because we had dwarves, we had a witch, we had some crazy prince-like kind of dude. <laughs> you got that weird wizarding kind of things. So, yeah, it, it was pretty cool. I, I, I enjoyed the episode, as it were, because it kind of gave me that feel of the 80s medieval yeah, Dragon Slayer, Lord of the Rings kind of vibe. Yeah, it definitely, I've got this later in my notes, but I'll talk about it now. It definitely was more episodic of an episode, if that makes sense, because it, it was definitely a standalone, kind of a standalone episode. But we did get, we get smatterings of the serial plot throughout the whole thing. But it, so it was really great to kind of have a break from worrying about all how the characters connect together and, and the plots and and all that kind of stuff, just to have a real straightforward D&D type quest, you know? Yeah, I miss that kind of myth and legend kind of like journey yeah. into something where it's set off on a path. But in this case, this particular episode was a quest for a dragon or a certain variety of dragons, which Geralt gets into during this, the actual episode when they talk about it. Yeah, I'll admit, when I watched this the first time when I did my binge through, I did not see the twist coming at all. I had no clue. When, when that golden dragon appeared and it was the voice of Borch, I was like, what? And I was like, oh, now I get it. Yeah. You know, and so watching it this time, I was able to watch for some of those clues as to his identity and kind of that his part in the story you know, because I thought that was, it was really, really cool. And I don't even put this in my notes, so I, I hope we get into it as we talk about it. There's subtle things throughout the episode that we get that now, looking at it, I go, oh, yeah, we could have seen that he was a dragon. Like when the, the warriors talk about the fact that, oh, he's this beautiful, whatever, how, I can't remember exactly how they put it, uh, when Jaskier asks them about how they're together. Then later there's a moment when, when he first meets Geralt and talks about the dragon, and Geralt says he doesn't kill dragons, and he, he says that's kind of funny that you're a monster killer, but you don't kill dragons. You know, just little subtle things like that throughout the episode, and then him having so much knowledge about about dragons when they have that conversation. So so it was, it was kind of cool to go back these two times watching it this week with that knowledge. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it was nice to go back, have a little bit of information, go back and rewatch it and see things that we didn't see before. Mm -hmm. And like you said, there was that, that twist. Mm -hmm. But also there there was there, there was a couple of things that I that I like cuz I think it's something that might come back later on in another season. I hope so. 
that Borch had done at the end. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. So with that, I think we should get on to our top fives. Absolutely. And I went last week, I believe, so you should go first. Don't judge me. Okay, my number five is just Jaskier, Jaskier himself. I, I love how he's making up this new song at the very beginning while they're they're waiting for Geralt to come back from that little mission at the very beginning. I love him kind of kind of hitting on the the female warriors there, and and then he wants to join until he sees Yennefer, and then it's the exact opposite with Geralt. You know, Geralt doesn't want to join the quest until he sees Yennefer, and then he does want to join. So it was it was really great to see that that interaction between the two of them and just that look on his face and I think he almost starts to say oh F when, when Geralt's like I'm in you know so just yeah, Jaskier in this episode was really good he had some really really funny moments some some uh, great stuff and I've got some more in my notes about Jaskier as well yeah same here I, I love the idea of Jaskier he definitely is that uh, comic or comedic element of the show that we need but also he always finds mm -hmm. himself in some sort of little peril or throwing himself in a little bit of a pickle at certain times of what he says or what he does. So, yeah. And it, I think it also helps him further the whole travels of Geralt and what he's doing, too. He's always there by Geralt's sides, regardless of what Geralt yeah. says. I hate you. Go away. <laughs> and he's always there, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that aspect of him. I just love the idea of the group that Borch had created in the very beginning. Pretty reminiscent. I already said it. Mm -hmm. it. It just kind of reminded me of a quest. Like in Lord of the Rings, they needed to have several groups. In this, they had four. And it took Geralt to see Yennefer in the very beginning at the bar when he was saying, no, no, no. Oh, I'll do it. Yeah. And you're like, okay. yeah. <laughs> and then and Jaskier's like, oh, great. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and then, you know, then you have the dwarves, which is almost somewhat like a comedic take to the show itself, which I loved. I love that aspect of them. Plus, I love dwarves. I love that idea of elves, dwarves, humans trolls and you know all that good stuff that comes from that fantasy element yeah and and on top of that you get the other people you got a couple of savages like that that borch carries around like those two women mm -hmm. yeah and they just like out there taking out people yeah uh, you know like at the very beginning they they cut the guy's head off. no she broke his neck she uh, she broke oh, it yeah, with, his, with her bare hands in my opinion then, that was breaking yeah, you know, cutting somebody's what, head off that's anyway. what jaskier says because <laughs> that's the whole thing jaskier says she just killed that man with her bare hands you know so yeah <laughs> Yeah, so I just love that whole idea and element of the, the of it, so. Yeah, that leads right into my number four, which is the, the four different groups that are going out on this quest. But it's weird because of the nature of how they're supposed to approach the dragon. They are all basically traveling together, most of the show. So we have, you already talked about the dwarves a little bit who are just really in it for the money. Then they have the, the, the reavers. And I wonder if that was a subtle Firefly reference there because, you know, the reavers were in Firefly were the people who had gone space mad out in the in in the far reaches of space and that's the whole plot line for the movie serenity after the tv series ended so so that was kind of cool getting those reavers and then of course we have borch as the dragon trying to go save one of his own and and yennefer with her reasons for wanting to go on the quest and all of them had like you said their their different kind of reasons i thought that was that was really cool that we got to see those different things yeah my number four would be the herica yeah it was killed by ike <laughs> And he was just overzealous, but we find his demise later. And I, I thought it was best to kill him for killing the Hereka because, you know, even though he was on the toilet, I think it was <laughs> definitely needed. I had watched that scene like three times. I'm looking at it and going, you know, this guy is just out there. You could tell he was afraid. He just killed this thing out of spite just because he was afraid. But what was Yennefer doing with him? You know, and on top of that, <laughs> it, it sounded like a rich kid that had a sword and felt empowered to do something, and mm -hmm. they all saw it going, w you're just killing it. You, 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 uh, Geralt just told you, yeah, yeah. Uh, wh oh, okay, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I had this in my notes because I didn't have it as one of my top five, so I, I love that you bring it up because it's kind of an interesting thing because on one hand, Geralt did tell them all to stop and told them to sheave their weapons, and then he jumps in front of Geralt and kills the thing. 
But also at the beginning, Borch had said, this path is going to be fraught with monsters and that's why I need you with me. This is the only monster we see. So where were all these other monsters that they were going to have to fight to get to the dragon? You know, so it's, it's a little weird. And then, you know, it's and I went back and forth on it with the killing of him because I agree that it was wrong for him to kill the Herika, especially because Geralt told everybody, no, don't we don't need to kill it. But at the same time, one of the Reavers, Boholt, is the one that kills him. And at the end there, you know, Yennefer wants to get revenge for this guy on Boholt because she says that. She says, oh, Boholt is mine. I'm going to take him out. And then, in fact, she does kill him at the end. But it was it was a weird scene, and then of course we get the the more humor yeah. when he he eats it, even though everybody is telling him don't eat that, you know. And uh, <laughs> so uh, so yes, yeah, so I love that you bring, you bring that up because that that was in my notes just a, a little bit about uh, the Herica and and Sir Ick. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> Ick Ike, yeah. whatever you want to call him. <laughs> yeah, <that>. yeah. <laughs> so my number three is Adam Levy. He's the one who's who portrays Mousak. I love his portrayal in this episode because it took me watching it three times to really notice the subtle differences but there's definitely he plays Mausak as a different character really I mean the hair is slicked back and it's got that little uh, knot man bun yeah. knot or whatever on the back just like the doppelganger like to do his speech patterns are very not Mausak like and you can tell when Siri is questioning him, because I think Siri even had doubts all along before Dara figures it out. So I, I just thought it was really, really cool the way he portrayed that. And then the we see here, you know, we saw Mausak take the queen's sash off her dead body. He was going to use it to hang himself. And here the doppelganger, the changeling, uses that sash to kind of show Siri, look, here I took this from your grandmother's body and try to get back into her trust. And, and so I thought that was really just, just the whole, his way of acting, because we're going to see him again portraying Mausak, portraying the real Mausak mm. in the later, the last couple of episodes. So Yeah, because everything's out of sequence and we don't know where mm -hmm. one left off and one began. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. My number three would be uh, Yennefer's need for the dragon based upon its healing properties. Her continuing need to have her choice back to have a child. Plus Geralt's speech to her, you know, and you could tell he cares for her. They argue like a couple within the actual scene itself. <laughs> then he drops the bomb of the child surprise, which I thought was pretty cool. But and she's like, why are you dropping this now? Why are you telling me this now? <laughs> like, yeah, and that was an interesting comment because she, you know, she wants to get her, she wants to have a child. And even the dragon at the end there, Borch tells her, you'll never get your womb back. So I think that was really, that was unfortunate, but it's also interesting. Geralt makes an interesting comment during their conversation. One of their conversations about this, when he says that their kind were made sterile for a reason. And so now I, I, I'm starting to think that maybe all of the mages, all of the witches are all not able to, to bear children. That may be just a consequence of the power. It wasn't just specific to Yennefer, you know? So I thought that that was kind of interesting. And then of course, when he mentions the child of surprise, she, like you said, she gets very, what is it? It's not defensive, but she gets kind of mad and frustrated because she realizes that Geralt can have something that she wants, but can't have, and he doesn't want it. You know, she wants a child and can't have a child. He has a child and doesn't want it, basically, is is the way she she plays it off. So I thought that was a really, really cool scene. So uh, my number two is you briefly mentioned the timelines. Our timelines are starting to get closer together here because the dwarves mention that Nilfgaard is on the attack, but they haven't made it to Sintra yet. And Yennefer talks about the fact that she had she's you know been alive for all these years and never seen a witcher and now she meets one for the first time and she can't get rid of him so we know that this episode takes place after yeah. the last episode we don't know exactly how much time has passed and i watched really closely when they're talking in the tent and he's talking about how the last time they were together she left and then she says, no, you, but you left first when I was in that ruined house. So that tells us that there's at least one time, or unless I'm overthinking it, there's at least mm. one time in between 
the house at Rind and this moment when they have interacted. Oh, definitely there is. Oh, definitely there is because that's something I don't recall from previous episodes. Yeah, and there's in in those flashes there's a moment when he wakes up in the bed and she's not there. Then they show us the moment when she woke up in the house and he wasn't there. And then, of course, the the next day she wakes up, or I can't remember which one wakes up first in the tent, but they're they're together in the tent. So there's definitely uh, there was definitely an interaction that we haven't seen yet. So I don't know if that's going to play into the second season or if they're never going to revisit it or what. But that's I just found it really interesting that we're starting to get our timelines to to match up here. Oh, definitely. And that was your number two. Yes, that brings us to your number two. My number two would be uh, that would be Siri's journey with the you know the changeling. You know, she badgers him and tortures him with questions as him portraying himself as Mousak, but he's not thinking that she knows something, but it was a way for her to get the truth to come out from him. I just loved it. It was her badgering, just, it was a nice bit of manipulation from her just to get the truth out of him of who he is. Then we see his true face when she puts the silver to his skin. Yeah, that was crazy, wasn't it? The, the, the way it, he had the pointed ears and the black skin and everything. I yeah. was just like, ooh, those and things we, are ugly. Yeah, we get to see that <laughs> true self. What yeah. does that thing look like? And we finally yeah. get it. He looks almost a little bit like a troll, like in Lord of the Rings in itself. Mm-hmm. Kind of grayish with the pointed yeah. ears and the, fun, the funky face with the teeth. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, and then, you know, they were able to take him down at some point. Yeah, and that was another interesting scene because they don't, she doesn't actually kill him. She doesn't stab him with the silver. She just puts the silver against his skin and then he runs off. Then the other guy, Kahar, or or whatever the guy's name is, catches her in the woods. And so we have to assume that the changeling was bringing her to him in the woods he was trying to tell her that he was bringing her to Geralt he was actually bringing her to this guy and then of course they fight the the changeling and this yeah. guy fight and there's an interesting exchange that i noticed the last time i watched it when the changeling becomes this i can't, I can't say his name you said his name last week i can't say it Kahar or Kir or whatever, however you say it. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he becomes him and he says, do you really believe she is what you think she is? And something about a prophecy and all this. So, so I thought that was really interesting. And of course he, he cuts him and he chases the changing down and he ends up killing everyone. That was a funny scene there. I mean, not really funny, but kind of dark humor there at the end with him and Fragilla when he's in that tavern and all those dead bodies are around him and Fragilla is, is Fringilla is like tending to his wounds and she says, you know, we could have just tested all of them with silver and he said, no, I had steel out already. <laughs> so it was like he killed everybody just because. Like, so... But anyway, so that brings us to, to my number one. And I think our number ones are, are very similar, which is just this, the whole fight scene there at the end and some of the aspects yeah. of it that I'll bring up and you can bring up. I, I, the dwarves, I thought it was funny that she froze the dwarves in, in where they stood and then Yaskier sleeps through the thing. And when he comes upon the dwarves, he's like, are we queuing for something? And then he just walks around them. But, you know, they both, they all miss it. And I love that I mentioned it before about Yennefer wanting to kill Boholt and she actually up saving Geralt by killing Boholt but that whole fight is a, it's a really good big fight scene that we haven't seen in a couple episodes I think maybe the banquet scene a couple episodes ago was the last really big fight scene we got to see oh definitely and I, I the, the fight scenes were amazing especially and I should go into my other notes because I left something in there and it, it's something definitely based upon what's going on now Mm-hmm. Within that fight scene, we actually see, you know, Yennefer using a sword. Mm-hmm. It's not consistently of using witchcraft or whatever it is or sorcery. Yeah. Yeah, and we get to see her fighting skills. She could handle yeah. herself physically in this. I think there was one point where she was using two swords. She had like a sword and a, and a knife or a short sword. She had in, she had a sword in each hand. Yes. Anyway, at one point. So Yeah. Definitely. That's always cool. It's always cool when I see that because I think that's 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 one of the coolest kind of fighting styles that I've ever seen. And I just I love it when actors can pull it off and look natural with it. And she looked she looked like she she knew what she was doing using both hands there. Yeah, definitely. Oh, and I forgot to mention we got to see the dragon. We get to see the dragon fire. Also, he he burns that guy in the cave. Yeah, yeah. 
at the end when the at the end when he, you know the dragon says the golden dragon says I'll protect the egg and everybody else runs out to fight and that one guy wakes up and he he thinks there's nobody else is there and so he's going towards to either I guess he was going to kill the egg or I'm not sure what he was going to try to do yeah. but uh, the golden dragon appears and says no you won't do that or I can't remember the exact line and then burns it with dragon fire I thought that was cool yeah which gives me the sense of almost like uh, if you remember the movie dragon heart mm-hmm. and the dragon speaks yeah yeah, and that's in this case it's not Sean Connery, but right, right, but yeah, yeah, but we hear that, yeah, and you know, it's 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 okay. I'm okay with the. There was a few times when the the dragon's mouth didn't really match. Yeah, but that's okay because it's it's I, I I always think of it when those dragons are. I don't know. I I just if think they're more talking. Of a, I think it's more subliminal. Yeah, more anything. of a telepathy kind of thing than it is yeah. really them speaking through like a vocal. A vocal thing, so I was okay with it. Yeah, same here. And like you said, our our number ones are pretty much the same yeah. as it yeah. were. So I don't I don't want to go into it further. Yeah, let's do quotes, and then we'll we'll look. I think we both got a bunch of different notes to to talk about here. I had two, so I'll I'll do uh, one of mine first. I <laughs> when the the dwarves are talking about Roach and and Jaskier says, "Charming how everyone wants to get their hands on Roach these days, isn't it?" And he introduced himself to the dwarves as, and I had to go back and with the closed captioning figure this, Julian Alfred Pankratz <laughs> is, and I don't know if there's more to that Pankratz because the dwarf yeah, cuts exactly. him off. Exactly, he's got but, a long <laughs> name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I thought that was cool that that uh, I don't remember him saying that earlier. In in the up in the episodes, maybe he did in episode two. Maybe he said, "I don't remember recall him saying his full name." I've always just you know we've heard Geralt and everybody else refer to him as Jaskier. So thought that was cool. Yeah, my one quote would be uh, Yennefer stating, "All our choices are yeah. our destinies." Yeah. A lot of talk about and destiny in this one. in this show. Oh, definitely, because everybody has their own. Yeah, and there's no talk of fate. But destiny is what you're destined to. Fate is the yeah. end result at that point. Yeah, I don't know. My last quote was, every time I'm near you, I say more in five minutes than I've said in weeks. And I always regret it. And that was when Geralt revealed the the child of surprise to Yennefer. I thought that was really great. And Henry Cable, man, it, that has to be tough. I wonder if they have to do something for him to maintain that gravelly voice. Because that's not normal, his normal speaking voice, you know. Oh, no, definitely not. <laughs> you you if you ever listen to him being interviewed he mm-hmm. sounds so much different so we've we've each got some notes here yeah do you want to just kind of go back and forth sure okay uh, let me just pick one because we talked about some of mine what exactly was Geralt's wish I, I I was a little unclear there at the end when he was talking when the dragon says or Borch I guess we'll just call him Borch we won't call him the dragon Borch says that they are tied together mm-hmm. and Geralt says it was in Rin because of the djinn and Yennefer gets all mad because now she basically mm-hmm. what she says is well i don't know if you really have feelings for me or if it's just because of your wish or if i have feelings yeah or do i really have feelings for just you or wish. is it just because of the wish and then she walks away so i i thought that was really kind of interesting what exactly was his 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 wish i i wish i i don't think we ever actually find out exactly what he wished for i don't I think it's exactly what he wished for, but my feeling was is that it was based on her being okay and her with him. Didn't necessarily mean that could more or less romantic. Yeah, that could be. I hadn't thought about that. Kind of like the old Chinese proverb about when you save someone's life, you're indebted you're not, they're to not them. Bound. Yeah, in debt, that kind of thing. And yeah. maybe he he wanted to save her life, and so now they're yeah. I could see it. I just think it's kind of but it was in kind this of case, it's one sided because it's only his wish, and she has that feeling of knowing sorcery and how a jinn mm-hmm. works. Is that why she's always attracted to him? Is that why she had sexual congress with him? Who knows? Right. But, right. you know, and then she's constantly having that on her mind, but yet they're still that attracted where they're together. Yeah, exactly. So I hope they, they hope they explore that. I don't remember if it gets explored later or not. So, yeah. Mine would be, I just love the dwarves in this. <laughs> like I said, I love this kind of stuff. It was nice to see some sort of representation of dwarves within the universe. Yeah, are, are dwarves, are they always Scottish, Irish? I don't know. I can't distinguish those two uh, it's, accents. It's, it's, <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. Everybody always presents them as such. Yeah. But I don't know. I, <laughs> I, I think it's whoever came into that idea of bringing them into whatever story they are. They just happen to be such. Yeah. So the first time that I rewatched this week, 
I didn't think there was much humor in it. And then when I watched it for the second you time, you could pick it out, right? <laughs> oh yeah, I started seeing all the more humor. And so I, I literally the first time I rewatched this, I put a note in saying, "Man, there's not much humor in this one." And then as I watched it the second time, I was like, "Well, I, I'm mistaken. There's a lot more humor in this than I than I remembered." And and so it was it was kind of cool to get that that progression of my my. Oh, definitely, process. like with the bridge scene with the dwarves. Yeah, with, the, with the, this is a shortcut to death you <laughs> yeah. know and then with was, them with... at the very end when they're still they're under that spell and they can't move yeah exactly and, and then you know then borch comes up to them saying here's the teeth yeah and i'm wondering if that's going to come in later on in another season because he promised them to drop a body on yeah if the king didn't believe if the king didn't they said that the teeth might not be enough proof for the exactly. king. exactly and so he says he says well if that's not enough proof you tell him that i'll drop a body of a dragon on his wedding or whatever so <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right in front of his front steps or something. Yeah. So and... we, we, yeah, we may get to see that <laughs> next season. I don't know. It, it'd be interesting to see what they come up with because if that doesn't happen, you know the dwarves are going to come back, and then that's going to be another quest for Geralt. Yeah. So that that would be cool to come back to. Yeah. I would say notice that whoever that Yennefer accompanies finds death in the end, but except for Geralt, who yeah, because every person that she's like on some sort of mission or journey with winds up dead yeah hmm i was mistaken frangilla's hand does appear fine because when she's tending to the guy in the tavern there both her hands look fine so it oh. must have been a temporary thing when that spell went wrong for her so hmm. well i like to break down the dragons uh Geralt states that the green ones are dwindling Red ones are rare, black ones due to mutation or intentional mutations, but I wonder if this comes up again within, you know, within the next season or so. Yeah, that was a great conversation because that's another one of those subtle moments where knowing what the twist is, you pick up on when Jaskier says that dragons don't exist or he kind of is incredulous the fact that dragons exist and they and the the guy talks about, "Oh no, gold dragons can be can be real and the 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 two one of them or both of the women warriors kind of laugh and chuckle at that so i thought that was really really cool that they knew who they were traveling with they knew they were traveling with a dragon who can transform himself into into a man i thought that i thought that was really cool okay so my next one is i just that ending it was kind of it was kind of tough that the serious we get two serious talks between jaskier and Geralt in this episode one is before he goes to see yennefer and it's kind of like a, almost like they're friends, but then at the end, there's another serious conversation they have after Yennefer kind of rejects him that he then tells Jaskier, you know, why is it that every time I'm with you, things go to, go, you know, go to hell and I can't maintain this and and he kind of and then Jaskier kind of goes well fine I'll just leave and I'll go get the rest of the details from for everybody else you know I thought that was that was kind of interesting those two I hope Jaskier carries on into the next season because those two guys is is a great match there a great buddy cop buddy <laughs> good cop bad whatever. cop buddy <laughs> yeah buddy monster buddy monster hunter you know Jaskier always wanting to prove himself and basically Geralt not letting him so so, Definitely. But that was kind of cool. So you had a him count. I did. I did. <laughs> uh, I had one. Uh, yeah, mine last one. And we already talked about your last one. Yeah. So I did. I got to 14. And I'm including the size that when the closed captioning would say sigh for uh, for Geralt. And there was a few times when he said, huh, instead of hmm. But I counted those as hmms. That, so, that. yeah, I got 14. And then, of course, we got one from Dara right there at the end that I thought was really, really funny when Dara did the hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if that was if that was meant to come across that way or what. But uh, I, I thought it was I thought it was kind of cool. Yeah. And as we talk about the episode as a whole, I really enjoyed it the second and third time because I actually had to watch it a third time as well. And it was pretty cool because, like, you didn't catch the, the humorous parts of what was going on, the humor parts within the episode, but I did on the second viewing and I just left again on the third. Yeah. But yeah, there are other things that were deep seated within it that I really enjoyed. You know, like the humor parts to me, some of them a little bit sick. Like, you know, it's like, oh, who does that? As they're relieving their bowels. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. Or, or stuff like that. Or, you know, obviously the dwarves in the very beginning with the bar fight. 
the awkwardness of Geralt and Yennefer in the very beginning, and then him and his resolve to go on this quest, and then he sees her and changes his mind. I was right. like, of course. Yeah. And then, you know, obviously with the, the bridge scene and the the inflection and the cursing of the, the head dwarf. Yeah. Who you would think somebody would swat him down, <laughs> but to me, you know. And then on top of that, the quest and the journey itself, as well as the, you know, the dragons being a mainstay. Yeah, I really, like I said, I, I really enjoyed this episode. I said at the beginning, I love that this is kind of a standalone episode in a way. In that, yes, we got some of the, the serial arc of it, but it really was its own kind of condensed thing. If we never, and it, even though we've mentioned there's things that they can bring up in the second season about this, but if we never see these dwarves again, if we never see Borch again, it's it's not, we're not going to miss it. We're not going to get to the end of the season two and go, well, where was this guy and where was this guy? Because it doesn't really matter. It would be cool to see him again, mm. but it's not, it's not like we're going to, you know, I, I just, I, so I really liked the, that this was kind of a, of a take a breath episode. In, oh, in between everything, because last episode set up a bunch of stuff that we're going to carry into the seventh and the eighth episode here at the oh, end. Definitely. So I'm, I'm really I'm really glad that we've done this kind of slow rewatch because it gives me gives me a chance to really focus in on those those few small points that we we might I might not have picked up on before. Or if if we were trying if I was trying to do fit in two episodes this week, I might have missed the humor. I would have been left with the taste of, oh, there's not much humor in this one. So I, I really, I, yeah, it was a good episode. Oh, definitely. And I agree. Honestly, the second watch allows me to enjoy the show a lot more. Because at a first viewing, you can get lost. And like you said, you got like through what, episode five or four? Four or five, something like that. I don't remember. I think it was the banquets. I think five. So maybe it was the bank. No, yeah, it was four because it was the banquets episode. Yeah, and so, that yeah. could actually change your view if you just watched it once in one passing and be like, oh, oh. yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, if you watched it again, you now. Not because we're podcasting, but if you watched it again later on, you're like, oh, oh, I didn't catch that before. And exactly, oh, this is humorous. Sometimes you, it it does take a couple of watches, even if it is yeah. a show. Sometimes a movie does that as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, well, it, you you say that about a movie. There's we talked about Strange Indeed covering in the Tall Grass last week. Yes, and I'm just going to move on since we have no comment talk and we have no news. <laughs> I'm just going to move on. Yeah, we talked about definitely. Strange Indeed and they did their their coverage of In the Tall Grass, uh, Paik and Rima. Uh, love those guys. Mm -hmm. They are so cool. I've People that we've met outside of, that we've met in the real world and I'm hoping to be able to go yeah. down to Tyler again in November if they have the, the Comic Con down there and see Paik again. But they did In the Tall Grass and after, so I only watched the movie once, I think, or yeah, once and then listen to their podcast. I want to go, I want to now, after listening to their podcast, I want to watch the movie again. And I just finished the novella mm. today as well. And I, so I want to go back and watch the movie again at some point. And so that it's great podcasting about things because we get that chance to do a deep dive. But then there's also things like I've been during this whole quarantine lockdown, I've been doing a, a rewatch of The Office, which I haven't done in a while. And I'm, I'm up to see, I'm in the last season now of the office and I'm just, just loving it. And, uh, as for podcast recommendations, I just started, I just subscribed to it because Jenna Fisher and Angela Kinsey are doing a rewatch of the office. Now they're still in season one. So I'm kind of picking, choosing the episodes that I'm going to listen to, but they're doing a, a podcast over the office called office ladies. And uh, so I would definitely recommend that it's really good. Yeah. The scrubs rewatch podcast with Donald Faison and Zach Braff is amazing. And, uh, uh, the other one is I did, I did listen to one episode of Michael Rosenbaum's you, you've mentioned inside of you. And, uh, I listened to, oh, I listened yeah. to his interview with Bob <laughs> Odenkirk, uh, today or this week and, uh, really, really good. Those are a little long. His, uh, which is cool, but at the same time it takes a while to get through. Oh, he gets inside of people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But, uh, but yeah, so the inside of you with Michael Rosenbaum and specifically, I've only listened to the Bob Odenkirk one, but I did not know how prolific Bob Odenkirk has been over the year. Like, oh, definitely. like he's only, he's been around a long time. He is. He's only six or seven years older, seven years older. I think than us, I think he's like 56, 57 he's, or he's turning 57 this year. He said it during the podcast, but yeah. like, I didn't know until this podcast and it's, it's on the trivia. If you go to his IMDB, but I'd never gone there that he wrote the Chris Farley van down by the river sketch 
for, for yeah. SNL. Chris Farley had created the character, but Bob Odenkirk wrote that sketch. that sketch for SNL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just all the that he's he's the the connection he had with Chris Farley was was really kind of amazing, and just all the stuff he's doing on Better Call Saul this year. And uh, I, you know, when I finish, when they finish Breaking Bad, I think it's got one more season. I'm gonna go and and watch Breaking Bad because I've never watched Breaking Bad. What did I say? Better Call? Did I say it correctly? I think I did. That he's they got one more season of Better Call Saul, which is the prequel to Breaking Bad. I've never watched Breaking Bad, so I'll be doing that. Awesome. The only thing I have really to recommend Chris Hardwick's ID10T. He's been coming back strong with a lot of people online. He did one recently that I enjoyed with Alexandra Daddario. Oh, nice. You find some interesting things about people within his podcast, just like you do on with Mike Rosenbaum's. Mm -hmm. Apparently, Alexandra plays piano and she's really good. <laughs> hmm. And apparently, Chris is starting to learn more piano. So they get into this whole thing and what they're doing within this whole. Uh, uh, quarantine and apparently this was done in the very beginning but regardless it, it was nice to hear that feedback and i actually it was pretty funny i today i just happened to watch two movies that she was in and you know she might be a lot younger but she she is a fantastic actress plus you know she's easy to look at too on film <laughs> <laughs> but uh definitely listen to uh, chris hardwick he loves getting into all the specifics and everything very cool so for our podcast next week, we will be covering episode seven of The Witcher. I do not have the title or the synopsis in front of me, so you'll find out next week. So <laughs> <laughs> You'll get and, it then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is a different format kind of podcast for us. It, for those of you listening, we have this is the first time both of us have, have watched an entire series, and now we're going back to rewatch that series. So it's a little bit of a different format. For us so it's it's been kind of cool uh, we may try this again sometime i don't know uh in the future but we'll have to uh we got a couple more episodes of the witcher to do and we're getting close to our 100th episode so Definitely. send us some feedback and you can send you can find us on uh, spotify google play apple itunes or whatever podcast player of choice you use if there's the chance the ability to give us a review we would love to have a review a five-star review from you on that whatever podcast player of choice you use. We have a website, which is panels to pixels podcast.com. And we have a Facebook page, which is the best place for you to interact with us, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. We also have an email address there. It's where you can send us voicemails, emails, whatever you want. It's panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one. The TO is spelled out right there in the middle. The number one at gmail.com. You can also call us and leave us a voicemail at 845-350-2095. You can also find us on YouTube under Panels to Pixels Podcast. Awesome. And where else can everybody else listen to us right now? Well, normally I'm a co-host on The Walking Dead Talk Through or Brian Malosh on Talk Through Media. And with that, we review The Walking Dead each week. This show, Panels to Pixels, is always on the Next Level Podcast Network, but there will always be a link for Talk Through Media Podcast for others to listen to through our Facebook page. So, absolutely. Right now, Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead, World Beyond is on hold until further notice. So, there isn't anything Walking Dead related, but you can listen to all previous episodes on talkthroughmedia.com. You can get those through Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. We do have the first and only episode of Let's Talk Through, and that's up where I'm kind of pushing kyle to let's do a, another one because we have all this time in between so we should get more podcasts out and i really would like to get uh something that's cool that's pop culture based that we could actually talk about and have fun with you know get another group going sure so exactly we i look forward to doing that obviously you could hear steve and i here and you could hear steve in other places yeah um i i watch way too much tv i will <laughs> i am i easily admit that and will freely admit that to anybody who asks i watch way too much tv and i love submitting voicemails to various podcast so my voice will pop up uh, occasionally westworld has wrapped up uh, house podcasting have wrapped up their coverage of westworld and uh currently i'm not sure what strange indeed is going to do next they haven't announced that or she rima hasn't announced that yet what she's going to do next td podcast industries is covering penny dreadful city of angels i send them feedback 
each week so you can hear my voice there. And, of course, right here on the Next Level Podcast Network on Panels to Pixels. Which is awesome. So that's pretty much our show for this evening. Thanks, everybody, for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you all on the next panel. Good night. Good night. Thank you.